So today we will build a fixed track that is dedicated more or less to ambient patches. This is a perfect way to practice modular and to experiment within a limited rack. Now I chose to limit the size to 3 rows, 112 HP, but this does not include the top row that you can see here. So we have here the mixer and of course the audio module. And I added also the notes module, so you can write there a few comments for yourselves or for sharing the patch with other people. There is also the scope and the record module so you can record the sound and the video if you wish and the MB module from Stormelder uh, for a better browser experience. So let's start with the module I find really useful for adding layers and creating textures and that is Simpliciter. Um, so we can use it to record live or to load and splice samples. Let's add also a couple of oscillators, so I will use Basil and Blick from Vult. Uh, both are beautiful sounding oscillators with a couple of ways to control their timbre, which is always good. Another module that every system should have, never mind what kind of music you're making, is Oct. Eight unsynced LFOs is always something that can add movement and variation to any patch, really. Then we will use Rampage from Befaco. Um, again, a multi-purpose module for envelopes, LFOs, gates, and so on. Then we will add the ADDR sequencer from Bog Audio. It's a small sequencer, perfect for sequencing modulation, for example. Let's also use Feline from Valley, which is a stereo filter, and we'll use also Punch, which is a stereo VCA. Then we will add Offset from Bog Audio, so we can attenuate, we can invert, we can amplify, and we can offset signals. Then we will use X-Fade, which uh, we can use for mixing and also cross-fading between two signals. Another module we will use is the quantizer from JW, which is always useful, and the AD envelope generator or function generator from Nischi. Now this module is very useful for all sorts of things, like bringing voices in and out, using it as an LFO, as a clock source even, and so on. Now we will use the 1 to 8 switch from Bong Audio. So we can send one source to up to eight destinations and switch between those destinations. Let's also duplicate the AD envelope because it's a very useful module. And the last one in this row will be clouds, um, which is amazing for adding texture to a patch. It has also a really nice reverb. So this was the first row. Let's continue with the second row. Um, so first of all, we will use Plets or the Macro Oscillator 2 from Mutable slash Audible Instruments. We can use it for all sorts of sound, uh, sounds melodic, percussive, and we can even use it as an LFO. Let's also use Psych from Instrua, which is perfect for chords and lash pads. Then we will use the Noise module from VCV. So we can add all sorts of uh, uh, noise types, just in case if you want to add some texture to a sound. 
and then we will add the low Lopez, the L Lopez gate, sorry, from Bog Audio, just in case you want to use a Lopez gate instead of a VCA. And also we will use the mixer from VCV that we can use, of course, to mix signals, but we can also use it to attenuate or to amplify even. And it's basically for VCAs, each one within the individual output. So it's a really useful uh, module. Then we will use a couple of sample and hold modules from Borg Audio. So this module is uh, rather small. It has two sections of sample and hold. And in the right click menu, we can even choose the uh, different noise types, the built-in noise types and the range, which is also very, very useful. Now we will add the grid sequencer from JW. We can run it randomly. And there is also probability per step. And it has also a built-in quantizer and range control controls, which is always, always helpful. Let's also use Tangents from Vult, which is a beautiful sounding filter, but it can also follow one volt per octave. So it means that we can use it as a voice if we wish. Then let's add the LLFO and also Walk from Borg Audio. So we have another LFO which has also a random wave function or selection here and walk um, for smooth random signals, which is always helpful. So now let's add the other switch, which is the 821. So we can send up to eight different sources to one destination and switch between them. And then, of course, of course, of course, the lovely Corona Blob 2 and Plateau. Um, you can use them as a part of the chain or you can use them as send effects with this uh, mixer we have. And this was the second row. So let's uh, uh, move to the third row, to the last row. So now we will use the phrase sequencer 32 from impromptu so we can sequence melodies use it as a keyboard sequence modulation sequence um, rhythmic elements so this is really really uh, um, a really helpful sequencer then we will use the tsl from instruo another beautiful oscillators uh, uh, oscillator with different wave outputs so we can mix them, we can switch between them, and we can also use it as a complex LFO if you want. Then we will use Ambience from Nischi, which is another really interesting reverb with all sorts of different functions with CV inputs, and it even has a freeze function that is quite interesting. Now we will use the or we'll add the clock divider from count modular so we can divide the triggers, we can divide clocks, we can use it even to generate sub oscillations if you want. Another useful module is branches from a mutable slash audible instruments. Um, so we can add probability and variation to the patch. Then we will add black holes from the geodesics, which is a mixer, but also eight not only VCAs as a, um, a voltage control attenuator, but it also uh, um, it can attenuate, and you have also CV control for this, so you can use it to as a ring modulator uh, to uh, as a VCA, or to invert your signals or attenuate them. So a really um, useful module. And then we will use another, just in case, another AD envelope. Again, very useful module and quite small, and we have the space for this. Now we will add the looper from Lilac. If you want to add more layers and textures and just experiment with looping. Now we will add, add Fate from the geodesics again with this module we can add variation to a sequence uh, to modulation to generate random gates and so on then we will use sangster from lindenberg which is a delay 
a BBD delay with lots and lots and lots of characters. So you can use it for sound design or for all sorts of different things. And the last module is the mixer from Count Modular, just if you want to mix a few signals, which is always fun. So this is basically the fixed rack, as you can see here. Um, all of the modules are available for free, of course, and only a couple of them are a bit CPU hungry, so the um, Plateau, for example, and Ambience. But all in all, it's not a heavy patch, and again, it's perfect for experimenting and practicing. So let's really have a look at a few examples. Okay, so this is the first um, patch. You can see here in the notes I wrote um, trigger section A of Rampage. So if you download this patch and you open it, you will have to trigger let me just mute this here, trigger um, the A section, just so it will start looping. And what's going on here? So first of all, I'm using Rampage as my clock source, the looping function of uh, the A section. I'm using the end of cycle to trigger the ADDR sequencer, which is in turn modulating the function which means that with each um, with each cycle the length of the envelope the length of the function is different and therefore also the clock rate or the clock frequency so we get sort of a generative a clock sort uh, going not really generative because we are using a sequence but still it has lots of movement and now what I'm doing here, I'm using the rising output to trigger the random function of the grid sequencer, which is sequencing the TSL. By the way, a tip I have for you, if you are using the, this uh, patch, if you want to learn this uh, rack, not this patch, this uh, fixed rack, try not moving the modules, try leaving the modules where they are, because then after a few times you will use this rack, you will not have to think where is what, and you will just start to remember where things are and you will concentrate more on patching rather than where is the module. If you always change the place of the modules, you will not be able to remember where they are without thinking about it. So anyway, this is sequencing the TSL, and you can see I'm mixing a few waveforms with the VCV mixer, and I'm also using it as a, as a VCA here with the CV input for the mixer. And this is being opened by an AD envelope, and what I love uh, also about this envelope that it has CV inputs for the attack and the decay. So in this case, I'm modulating them with sample and hold. So again, with each cycle, we get a different uh, envelope, basically. And another thing I'm doing here, if you listen to the TSL for a second, You can hear that it has sort of vibrato. So what I'm doing here, I'm using oct, I'm, um, sending two uh, signals from oct to the X fade, and I'm uh, cross fading between them. And you can see the result here on the scope. So it will change between the different um, frequencies, and this is modulating the frequency of the TSL, again, adding sort of vibrato. Now this is going through ambience. Ah, by the way, first of all, from the mixer it's going to a Lopez uh, filter and tangents, and then I'm splitting here the signal and it, go it goes once to ambience for a nice reverb, and this is what we hear now. But I'm also splitting it into, into, let's see here, into simpliciter. So another copy after the filter is going to Simpliciter, and here, by the way, I'm using Walk to modulate the frequency of the uh, cutoff point of the filter. And I'm using the falling gate output from Rampage. And again, this is always changing according to this uh, sequence. So it's going first to branches, and then from branches with probability it goes and it triggers the recording and playback of Simpliciter, which means that Simpliciter will record this TSL voice randomly and will play it back in reverse and an octave down and it will sound like this. Now another um, thing that I'm doing here 
is form simpliciter, it goes once um, two black holes, just to attenuate the signal a bit because it's a bit too hot. And from there it goes to chronoblob and plateau. But I'm also here I'm splitting the signal and I'm sending it also to clouds to add another texture, which is something like this. something like this. I'm using oct, I'm using one output of oct as a sort of a clock, and this is triggering an envelope, the AD envelope, and I'm using the end of cycle output of the envelope to trigger sample and hold here, and I'm using this sample and hold through the quantizer as pitch information for psych. So this is sequencing psych. And now what I'm doing here is this psych, is going first of all to a filter, to a Lopez filter. From there, it goes to plateau. And as you can see, plateau is all the way wet. So the dry is all the way down. So I'm using this as a, a sort of a wet reverb, 100% wet. And then from the reverb, it goes to punch, which is again a stereo VCA. So I'm, and I have the envelope, the same envelope that I'm using to trigger the sample and hold. I'm using it also to open this VCA. So I'm using the reverb before the VCA, which can also be quite interesting. From there, I'm just going to the mixer, not to mix anything, but just to take the levels to attenuate them a bit so it's not too harsh. And I'm using the individual outputs. They are going to the chronoblob for some nice delay and from there to ambience for a nice reverb. And this is how it will sound like. Again, I'm sending the voice to a reverb, a 100% wet reverb, and then to a VCA. So we get this really nice pad. Let's wait for it. Psych, by the way, will output chords in this case. So we get this nice texture, this nice pad. Playing in the background and on top of this, I'm going to use and the phrase sequencer is a sort of a keyboard to play plats, as you can see here. And I'm going to use the looper to record a loop with plats. So it will continue looping, it will go through Sangster for a nice uh, uh, texture, for a nice character to the sound, and then to clouds. So if I just play it without looping, it will sound like this. Right, but now I can start recording, recording a loop. Let's say that this is the loop. Let's wait a bit and stop it. And now it will start looping.
Okay, so what we have here is this. If I go look at the notes module, I see here trigger AD envelopes and use tangents to bring in noise. So let's start with the AD envelopes. We have two envelopes here that are set to loop. And when you open this patch, you have to trigger them. So let's trigger the first one and trigger the second one, which is here. Already we get one voice. So what I'm doing here is this. I'm using the end of cycle output of this looping envelope. This is my main clock source. I'm using it to clock the forward function on the grid sequencer, so it will go forward, but I'm also sending it to a clock divider and I'm using a divided by four to take this downward, to trigger the downward function, which means that we have basically 16 steps. And now this is going first of all through fate to add some variation to the pitch and because fate will add variation to the pitch we need to quantize it also afterwards so i'm using the quantizer from jw and this is sequencing the two oscillators from volt we have here basil and blick and as you can see we have modulation on their timbre from oct and now they are going to feline again as a stereo filter and I'm using two different LFOs. It has uh, two CV inputs, so I can mix two different LFOs to open the cutoff point. This is going to a VCA to punch the stereo VCA. And I have here an envelope that is being triggered by the sequencer opening this VCA. And this is going to clouds. And so this is how it will sound like. Now I have here another voice, I'm using again uh, another looping envelope that we uh, started before. And this is another clock source and it's going and it's triggering the phrase sequencer 32. I have a sequence, a sort of an arpeggio here going and this is sequencing the uh, macro oscillator 2, it's sequencing plats. Now I'm sending this uh, arpeggio into the mixer from VCV and I'm using it as a, a VCA in this case. So the ARP is always running, but only when the envelope from Rampage is opening this VCA, it will actually go through. And this is going through some delay with Chronoblob and Reverb with Plateau, so it will sound like this. Let's wait for it. Just like this, so the sound will come in and out. And by the way, to this clock, to this uh, um, looping envelope that is, that is running the phrase sequencer, this one here, I'm also using some modulation, so sample and hold, through some attenuation with black holes. So every time the clock is a bit different, so the arpeggio will uh, run at different rates. And now, as we've seen before, it says here, use tangents to bring in noise. So I'm just sending noise into tangents and this is going to ambience very nice and there is modulation for the panning also so i'm using the lfo llfo to modulate the panning and walk to modulate the rate of this llfo so if you listen carefully you will hear that the frequency of this modulation is always changing quite interesting okay and that was it I hope you will go explore this template and really try to use it for a while and try building all sorts of patches with it exploring the modules exploring the sounds I promise you you will learn a lot from this have fun and cheers.